and a good morning to you from the North Pennines. What am I up to today? Well, I thought I'd do a driving video, so I don't do very many of them. And I'm out to settle a score with a demon. It wouldn't be fair to travel the North Pennines without showing some of the gorgeous roads that have to be travelled to reach some of my favourite destinations. As I leave the car park behind and look around, I remember why I fell in love with this place. morning on this bright and breezy June morning from one of my favorite places Cow Green Reservoir. So what am I up to today? Well I've parked the car and I'm up walking towards the north end of Cow Green Reservoir itself and apparently there are some interesting old mine workings up here so I'm gonna have a quick look at those and then if you were listening earlier on, you'll have noticed I said I was going to conquer a demon. Well, what's that all about, you may say? Well, after I visit these mines, I'm going to go on to the, shall we say, western side of it, and I'm going to conquer that. Melvin Hill. There is a long story attached to that. And for that, you'll have to wait till the summit. In the meantime, let's go. I mentioned about visiting an old industrial lead mine and our journey basically begins here. But what is it? It just appears like two concrete lines in the middle of nowhere. But what does it do? What's it for? Hmm. Yes, it is quite big. What we have here are the foundations of a water wheel. Now this water wheel was approximately 10 and a half meters in diameter or 35 feet. And there are pictures available online. I'll put a link in the description below. And basically it would turn and out of the side would come a crank which would also turn and attached to that was a large wooden rod and as the crank turned the wooden rod would move on the crank so therefore you've got rotary motion going into lateral motion but where would it go there's no mine round here as such and what it would do is this rod will connect to another rod, to another rod, all the way to somewhere called Swan's Shaft, 503 metres away. So you have these massive wooden rods running 
virtually half a kilometre up the side of the moor to Swan Shaft, which is where we're going next. Yes, imagine a massive wooden rod just slowly moving backwards and forwards, powered by that water wheel, travelling up the moor. Yes, for 503 metres up there, where it would finally, the rods would come up to here, the swan shaft, which is 231 feet deep. It's collapsed in now, but I wouldn't like to try and find the bottom. And what would happen is the rods push them backwards and forwards would push on something that looks similar to a cross. And at the top of the cross, the rods would touch, and there's a movement went left and right. The cross would transfer the force from a, a lateral horizontal to a lateral vertical, and therefore pump water out of the shaft. Fascinating work. Obviously, there was officers as well, mine workers officers. There was about two or three people permanently here watching it all the time. And this is interesting, it's a blocked up slot in the wall. Did this mean the beams also came through here? Who knows? Yes, Green Hearth Mine, which was worked for about 50 years and it was actually quite profitable until it flooded, I think it was about 1909 or 1907. But the Industrial Revolution changed this landscape. Fascinating. Yes, travelling down the old tram bed, basically, with Swan Shaft back there. But that wasn't actually where the mine was. That was just a pumping shaft. The main shaft is down here. So, obviously you've got the tramway running all the way down. You've got Swan Shaft at the top, which is a drainage shaft with a pump on it. And the main mine is here. Quite a little industrial complex. This is the entrance to Green Hearth Mine. No way am I going down there. It's still open. Mm -mm. And here was where the ore was graded, washed, separated, ready to be transported out. Greenhoff Mine, a fascinating look into a forgotten age. But now we move on to the River Tees. Leaving Greenhof mine behind, I hike over to the River Tees, which is little more than a large stream at this time of year. T 
taking advantage of the island in the middle, it isn't long till I cross to the other side, and experience an enjoyable walk along its banks. Here's where we leave the River Tees and head up Force Burn. Well, here we are at Force Burn. Now, obviously, Burn, small stream, here it is. But Force, well, if you remember my video a couple ago, I said the word foss was an old Norse word, foss, meaning waterfall, and it isn't going to disappoint. Burn. What a delightful little waterfall. However, no time to stop, time to conquer a demon. I can put it off no longer. My mind is ready. I came here with a score to settle, and this time I will not be defeated. Now the story. What I am pointing at in the distance, the gap in the mountains, is actually the location of High Cup. Many years ago I hiked to High Cup from Cow Green along the Pennine Way with my begrudging partner who didn't really enjoy the hike. For the return she didn't want to follow the same route back, so I suggested up and over Meldon Hill instead. This was an only an hour before sunset. I knew we would have the blue hour, then absolute darkness would fall. She was physically exhausted by this time and slowed down. We never reached the summit and had to detour halfway around its flanks. It took us seven hours in the absolute dark to get back to the car. It tested us physically and mentally and since then this mountain has been my demon, the one I have avoided. But today no more, I am here now to face it head on and to conquer it. And as we travel down from Melton Hill, it's a bit windy up there, couldn't stay up there for long, but the view is quite impressive. Tell you what, spin time. Uh, 
Not bad at all. So as we head on down this shooting track, we should eventually arrive at Burkdale Farm. Yes, we've been there before. And hopefully I should be able to grab some lunch on the way. Lunch is grabbed out of the wind and I now follow a shooting track down to the lodge, all the time admiring the peat moors that are found on the flanks of Melton Hill. Look familiar? Grainbeck Bridge on the Pennine Way. Yes, here I am, back on the Pennine Way. And here we are, back at Cow Green Reservoir and Dam. Oh, go on then, while we're here. Welcome back to Cauldron Snout. To have some idea of scale, notice the hikers standing at the top of Cauldron Snout. It is bigger than it looks. Cauldron Snout never fails to impress. As I look over Cow Green Reservoir, with Meldon Hill in the distance, I remember what I have achieved today, the places I have been and what I have done, the sense of achievement helping to finish off a tremendous day. And as this hike draws to a close, which I think is just as well because I believe it's going to start raining, I came, I saw, I conquered my demon. Melden Hill is done, totally smashed. So I've quite enjoyed this hike, hope you have as well. Whether you have enjoyed the mine, Melden Hill, the scenery, or even just the journey. Do not forget everything you've watched, everything you've seen. This is nature. <laughs> <laughs>